Hello and welcome to DBase LLC's first day one announcement on how to build a basic CRUD application. My name is Mike Roslog and I'm the president and CEO of DBase and I am ecstatic to be here today to talk to you about building a CRUD application with DBase. We're going to have a demo here in a few seconds, but let's just kick this off and get into what this is. This is only going to be a very short introduction into CRUD and then we're going to get right into the demo. So what is CRUD? Well, it's a type of database application that supports four basic things. The C basically stands for create. You can either create a database or create a record in a database. The R stands for read. You can read a record from the database or retrieve a record from the database. The U stands for update. You want to modify or change the record in the database. And then finally the D stands for delete. And you want to either remove the record from the database or get rid of that record in the data set that you're working in. That is basically what a simple CRUD application is. Create, read, update, and delete. Now there is another set that some people do use which is O that you can say to go ahead and put it out to output someplace else. But for what we're doing today, I'm going to show you how to build a simple CRUD application talking to one data table and then being able to create an instance, read it, update it, and delete it. Let's continue on. Okay, let's make an example of what we just defined inside of the presentation. As you can see, I have DBase Plus up and it's running and I have the navigator open by default. Keep in mind that inside the navigator you can basically get to almost all of your resources just by clicking on the tab. So I can get to my projects, I can get to my forms, my reports, my programs, tables, SQL, data modules, and also images and other things like executables and things like that. For this example of the CRUD application, I want to go to the forms. Once you're in the forms, the next thing you want to do is put it on a form that says untitled. What this is going to allow me to do then is to go into the designer. Now, if you put your selection on one of the other forms and then hit design, it's going to open up that form. So if we want to start a new project or a new form so we can build our CRUD application, we want to put that on the untitled member. When I click the design tool menu, you notice it comes up with a new form and it basically says do you want the wizard to create a layout from your database fields automatically or do you want to do this by hand? Well for this quick example, I'm going to go ahead and use the wizard. So I'm going to go ahead and click the wizard button. The next thing it's going to show me is where all of my databases are defined. In this instance, I'm going to go ahead and use employee.db, which is a paradox table. One of the great features of DBase is that it can go out and connect to other data sources beyond DBase and allow you to build applications talking to those other backends, such as Oracle, Sybase, Paradox, and others. So now I'm going to build my table or my application or my form off of my employee. D dot db. I'm going to then click the next button. Notice that I have all of my fields that are showing before me and it's asking me which fields do I want to have in the interface. For this particular example I want to have all of them so I'm going to go ahead and click the double greater than sign. Notice that all of the fields now are in the selected field area and now I'm going to go ahead and hit the next button. The next question that comes up and asks me is how do I want this to look? And as you can see I have different layout styles. I have a columnar layout, I have a form layout, and I have a grid layout. Well for this it's just as easy to have just a single columnar layout because I don't have multiple tables, I have one simple table and the idea is for us to be able to create records, read records, delete records, and update records. So now I can also pick the associated component types that go along with that and I can pick which ones that I think should be in there. But again for this one I'm going to leave those as default. After that I'm going to go ahead and hit the next key. 
this is going to basically bring up some of the look and feel of what the application that will be created will look like. I can come up to different schemas and make them look differently off of the Windows sets, or I can make it look a little bit differently and I can set different properties for the component and the form layout. As you can see, I can set up the properties from these tab interface settings and I can change the way the application that's going to be generated looks. Once I'm happy with what I have, which I'm going to leave as default, I'm going to go ahead and hit the next button. Now at this point, the application has technically been written. But now what I want to do, I can either go into the designer or I can run the application that I just created. For this example, I'm going to go ahead and run the form because I want to show you what happened. So let's go ahead and just hit the run form. Now the first thing it's going to do is come up and say, hey, I need to save this form out. And I agree with that. So we're going to say this is my example day one. And we're going to go ahead and hit the save button. Notice it's going to put it into a WFM or a Windows Form module. We'll go ahead and hit the save. And as you can see, here's my application. You see I have an employee number. I have last name, first name, telephone extension, date of hire, and my salary. Now that's great, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close this down. I'm just going to close it down. Now, I'm then going to come into my example one, and I'm going to come back into the designer. Now this is where I want to start adding a little bit more information to it. Because, as we can see, the employee doesn't allow me to do too much. And so I want to go ahead and change some of the capabilities. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the form and make it just a little bit larger. The next thing I'm going to do is I want to be able to be able to go forward and backward inside of my CRUD application. So I want to be able to go to the next record or go to the prior record. So I'm going to drop down two buttons. So I'm going to take button from my component palette and I'm going to drop that onto my form. Now you'll notice over here on the side we have an inspector and the inspector has three things. It has properties which can be set, it has events which can be executed, and it has methods which can be called. So what we want to do with this is I want a push button. Now I'm going to drag down to my scroll bar to the side and I can see that the text says scroll push button. I don't want it to be called push button. I want it to be called prior. So I put a less than sign prior to show which way the database will be checking. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put another button in here and I'm going to put this up to and line it up for my next button. And I'm going to slide down my inspector again to push button 2. Now this time I'm going to say next and I'm going to put a greater than sign so it shows which way the database will be going through. Now that I've made my interface the way I want, I want to now be able to put the code behind that to make it happen. Now to do that, it's pretty straightforward, but there's a couple of things that you can get right from the environment that may help you do a lot of your work a lot easier. One of the things is that you can usually set any of these properties, you can usually go in there and set an equals and set those properties. So you could say something like form dot uh, push button dot text and then put the next in quotes and you could have that as your as your definition or you can come in and do an event or you could go ahead and do some methods now what I want to do is go to the prior button and notice how I have here's all of my properties here's my events and I want to do an on click event because when somebody clicks that I want the database to go back one level so I come in and hit my little toolbar and when that opens up, you'll notice that I have a structure ready to go. Now this is my code. If I look at my code, you'll see that I have all of my definitions above here. So I can see that I have example day one form. Here's the employee. There's that text that we were talking about. Here is the database as it's being set up and the connection to the database with the query to the database. And all of that stuff is being set up for me. Now, so what I want to be able to do is come into here and I want to type in the word form and then I'm going to put a period. So I'm talking to the form that I'm looking at. 
the next thing I want to do is I want to say employee one because that is the name of our database. So I'm going to type employee one. After that, I want to get to my row set because employee is a column or setup, so it's a two dimensional array, and I want to get to the row of that. So I can just say row set, and then the next thing I want to do is I want to go, since we're doing previous, I want to go to the next but I want to do a minus one inside of there so that'll move me back one row okay so let's go back out and go back to my code now or go back to my designer and let's see what we have so there is my example day one now let's take a look at this so if you notice notice how it says form if I hit this drop down button I can find out what everything's available to me so remember how I wrote that code I said form dot employee dot row set and if you notice there's the dot so employee form dot employee dot row set now once I click on row set now notice what happens my expector automatically changes to that object so now I can see all the properties for the row set and I can set things inside of here like whether it's a master row set, whether this is a live data or whether this is not live data, whether it's read only or modifiable. I can look at my events. Can I update? Can I navigate to the record? And then I can also see all the methods. And what are we doing? We're basically going to the next. And if we come down here, you'll notice that if we slide down, you'll see the next right here. And then if you hit your F1 key on that, you'll notice that you basically get that help for that property, event, or method that you're calling. And since we're calling the next method, we would get that next information. So now I can then go back into my example and I can go to the next. And then I go to my events and on the click, I click my little toolbar. And now what I can do is I can just take and copy that prior row that I did before and I can copy that into there. Now this time I don't want to go back. All I want to do is go to the next. So I just remove that minus one. Now I think we've done enough for this right now. So let's go ahead and save it. And let's go ahead and run this. Now as you can see, there's my application again running as it should be. If I hit next, you notice it goes to my next record. If I hit my prior, it goes to my prior record. So all of this looks like it's working as designed.